milkweed and setta. Monarch caterpillars eat milkweed. Milkweed has three parts. Those parts are the stem, leaves, and pods. Monarch caterpillars eat milkweed for the poison, so predators don't eat them. Milkweed really helps the caterpillars live and not to starve. I really think milkweed is a perfect fit for the caterpillars. In winter, milkweed is very poor. In summer, spring, or fall, it grows a lot. When you raise monarchs, you use containers or tents. You clean them every few days. You replace the leaf, watermelon, or whatever you are feeding the monarchs. Also, you need to clean the frass out of the tent or container every one to two days. Every time we clean the container, it looked way different with all the frass out. When the caterpillars come out of their eggshell, they're at least one millimeter. Isn't that cool? But very small. Its first meal is its own eggshell. After that, the caterpillar will only eat milkweed until it is a pupa. Caterpillars are very slow, but they get where they need to go. It will take them a long time before going into the J formation. Molting. Molting is when the caterpillar's skin falls off. The skin falls off five times. The skin is clear with white stripes on itself. The face mask is the skin that covers this. The caterpillar eats its skin. Another word for molting is shedding. When I saw the caterpillar shed its skin, it was wiggling. Large caterpillar. The large caterpillar is usually two centimeters long. It only eats a poisonous plant called milkweed. When it eats, its bites are so small you can't even see them. When the caterpillar moves, it pushes its front part of its body forward. The lower part of its body pushes forward too. The frass is the caterpillar's poop. You have to clean it out twice a day. The large caterpillar is black, yellow, and white. But when it is first born, its head is black and its body looks green. When it is fully mature, its head is the same color as its body. Each time it sheds, its colors get brighter. The caterpillar has some fake feet and some real feet. The fake feet are called prolegs. When the caterpillar gets bigger, white spots appear on its prolegs. Each time it sheds, its antennae get longer. Those are some facts about the large caterpillar. Finding a spot. The caterpillar searches for a safe spot to hang. Then it makes a little tiny button. The caterpillar hangs hangs upside down in the shape of a J. Next, a chrysalis hardens around the caterpillar. Then, when in 10 or five weeks, the chrysalis will turn brown. And then that means that it is ready to come out. Pupa. For a caterpillar to become a pupa, it must split the skin one more time. When the skin drops 
Out comes the creme master. The caterpillar does a wiggle dance to get the creme master stuck in the button. It's so funny. The outside hardens into a chrysalis, which is actually clear. It looks green, but it's just the pupa inside it. Emergence. The butterfly pushes itself out of the chrysalis and its wings are wet and weak. Its body is full of liquid and the monarch hangs from the empty chrysalis. And slowly flaps its wings to help them dry. Monarch butterflies. Monarch butterflies are orange, black, and have white dots. They have bright colors, so they warn predators that they are poisonous. Their antennae are for balancing and smelling. Their proboscis strains to reach into a flower and curls up when it's not in you. The way you can tell a boy from a girl is a male monarch has a dot on each of its lower back wings, and a female monarch has no dots at all. The patterns of a monarch are that they all have white dots on the outside of their wings. They also are a lighter color orange close to the middle of their body. Their legs help them to land on the flower. When we were observing the butterflies, we watched them eat. They used their proboscis to eat their food. They eat water, watermelon, cantaloupe, and nectar. I was amazed when watching them eat their food. They really ate a lot. They are amazing, spectacular, and interesting winged creatures. When we took care of the butterflies, we did some research on them. Over winter, they slept on branches and trunks of trees. Raising them inside, they started sleeping in the late afternoon. I wish I could see these creatures sleep. Mrs. Fink said hers line up in the tent. Then they sleep until Mrs. Fink turn on the lights in the morning. Tagging. What is on a tag? On a tag is the little number that you put on the butterfly. The tag does not hurt the butterfly at all. Why do we tag? We tag so if someone finds our butterfly, they can put it on the web so we know our butterfly made it. Where does the tag get placed? The tag gets placed on the bottom wing on the disco cell. When we were tagging our butterfly, our teacher held its two wings together. Release. The temperature was good to release the butterflies. We had a parade before we released the butterflies. We went through all the classrooms with musical instruments and illustrations of the butterflies that we had made. They were decorated with orange and black ribbon. After that, we took the butterfly tents out and into the garden. Some students got to hold the butterflies when we released them. Everyone was cheering and waving goodbye. The Life Cycle Books. This is what I thought about the Life Cycle Books. The Life Cycle Books are fun. I included the Monarch Egg, Caterpillar, Pupa, Butterfly, Milkweed, and Migration. We had to draw pictures too. It helped me find out more about them. Without it, I wouldn't have known as much about Monarchs. It was an amazing experience. For the egg, I included the size, what it looks like, and the color. For the Caterpillar, I included the exact same thing, except I needed to add the J. I included different things for different topics. I learned that a pupa and a chrysalis aren't the same thing. I also learned that a caterpillar molts four times. That's what I thought about the life cycle. Journals. In our journals, we record what we observed about the caterpillars. Some stuff I saw was pretty cool. Then we would measure the caterpillars. They got bigger and bigger. The caterpillars look like bumblebees. We would draw what we saw in our journals. 
looking through the microscope. When I looked at the skin and face mask, I was in shock from how cool it was. The face mask looked very hollow and kind of scary. It looked brown and black stripes. Skin of a monarch looks rough and very cool. Your skin looks brown and black striped too. MZ chrysalis looked very open and cool, but very small, clear, and bumpy with many lines. The butterfly wing looked like it was sewn. It looked bumpy and scratchy. Another thing that I looked at on the butterfly wing was all the scales. The monarchs migrate because they need a warm place. Monarchs of the east of the Rockies go to Mexico. Monarchs of the west of the Rockies go to California. We know that the monarchs travel 3,000 miles. We think they gain weight because they glide. We aren't sure how they find Conservation. People are clearing the roosting trees in California so people can live on the coast. Others are cutting down trees in Mexico which will affect the monarch population. They are cutting down the trees for lumber. It destroys roosting trees, which opens canopies to rain and snow, so the monarchs will get too cold and die. Some of the places where the monarchs stay in the winter are now protected. Loss of milkweed. When you spray crops around milkweed, the spray will kill the milkweed. So agriculture, which means farming, is killing off the milkweed. There is not much milkweed in Mexico because they cut it down. Also, when you clear your land, people use that land to put more stuff there, like more houses. These things all cause the loss of milk. Why monarchs? Why do we have monarchs? Well... We have monarchs because they pollinate just like bees. Monarchs are also a critical part of the energy chain. We love monarchs, so we should treat them well. They are beautiful, so do not cut down their trees or milkweed. Save the monarchs! <laughs>